We've got a great lineup of guests ahead for you. It can be tough to talk with kids about subjects that are hard for even adults to fathom. And our next guest says parents don't have to pretend they don't have to talk to kids about these topics. Dr. Carol Lieberman has been dubbed as America's psychiatrist and is here with her advice on how to have these tough conversations with kids. Welcome to the show, doctor. Thank you. Well, you know, with the 20th anniversary of 9-11 coming up, um, it's, it's a topic right now on, on mind for a lot of people, adults and kids, trying to understand um, what that day is all about. So how can adults start to explain and open that conversation about a day of remembrance with the children? Well, you know, the, the, the benefit of uh, the anniversary coming up is that kids see this on television, they see it on the Internet and so, so on. And it's a good way to jump into the conversation. I talk about terrorism uh, as the birds and the bees talk that parents have to have with kids. In other words, it's a fact of life, unfortunately, and it's something that parents um, and teachers feel awkward uh, talking to kids about. But we cannot pretend that it didn't happen. And we cannot pretend, obviously with Afghanistan, we cannot pretend that we're not in an ongoing, that there isn't an ongoing risk of terrorism. And this is really valid because I have eight and nine year olds at home who are trying to understand. They're seeing some of the imagery. They'll hear me and their dad kind of talking about it. But it's like, how far do we go? How much do we tell them when we're when they're asking questions? You know, what's the best way to, to really uh, explain what's going on? Well, of course, it depends upon how old the child is and how psychologically mature the child is. But, you know, one way to, um, to sort of benignly get into it is if, you, if they're seeing the news, um, you can ask them about what do you think about that? What do you think that that is? Um, how do you feel about that? First, ask them what they think and then get into an explanation. You know, I've written a book called Lions and Tigers and Terrorists, Oh My, How to Protect Your Child in a Time of Terror. And half of the book is for grown-ups, and half of the book is a picture book for kids. And so I draw, one of the pictures is an illustration that answers the question, what is a terrorist? So it's a picture of a bully on a playground. Now, for young kids, you know, that's something they can get their head around, a bully on the playground. A bully wants other kids to follow their rules, just like terrorists want the West to follow their rules. Oh, that's a good way to kind of put it on their level in a way that they can understand. So you talked about being age appropriate, also emotionally appropriate. Before we really get into that conversation with them, what's another important thing that we need to do? Well, you know, you can um, ask them to draw, you know, these, again, depending upon the age, but you can ask them to draw um, pictures, just give them a crayon and papers and see what they draw. If they draw something that's, uh, if they draw something and then they scratch it all out, um, or if they draw rain or, you know, rain would be feeling sad, scratching it all out is angry. I talk about, um, four different feelings that kids have mostly in regard to 9-11 and terrorism. Um, and that is scared, sad, mad, and bad. And bad isn't doing things that are bad, but just a, sort of a, a mixture of feelings that they can't quite explain. Um, but you cannot and you should not hide what is going on. We must, all adults too, we must never forget uh, 9-11. And uh, we have to instill that, get kids to understand that. Another example that I give a, a child way of understanding things, they might ask, why do terrorists set off explosions, set off bombs, set off the bombs in the plane? You know, um, you can explain it as they're having a temper tantrum. They're angry that we're doing things our way and they want them to, we, they want us to do it their way, that kind of thing. And then you can say, well, when you have a temper tantrum, you don't get your way, do you? Well, the terrorists aren't going to get their way either. And uh, there are specific things for 9 11 on the day that you can do. It's not, should not be to hide them from everything, but you can do things to stress the positive, not just, I mean, of course, honoring the deaths and the heroes and so on, but, but stress the positive, the first responders, um, the, uh, the servicemen, the people who joined the military because they were, uh, it felt passionate to protect America and things like that. And this is something, especially with what's currently going on in Afghanistan, that the parents are coming to you about? Well, yes. Well, you know, on 9-11, uh, the original 9-11, 
Um, I'm a born and bred New Yorker. I live in California now, but I'm a born and bred New Yorker. And 9-11 really impacted me. And that's when I decided that I would become one of the terrorist therapist. So I've written two books on terrorism. I do a podcast, the terrorist therapist podcast, a terrorist therapist show. I do uh, speaking engagements, all kinds of things. Since for 20 years I've been doing this um, to help people not only cope with the memories of 9-11, which are still affecting us, by the way, but also cope with the ongoing threat of terrorism. You know, people who say, oh, no, 9-11 isn't still affecting me. Just look at the obesity epidemic, for example. You know, that started after 9-11 when people started eating comfort food. Mm. All right, Dr. Lieberman, very good insight that you shared with our audience today. If you want more from her, you can visit terroristtherapist.com.